In this video, we're working problem 11.r.043 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook, 7th edition. We're asked to find the equation of a plane containing two lines given below in symmetric form. So remember what we need when we're finding the equation of a plane. We need a point in the plane and a normal vector to the plane. Um, if we have a normal vector with components a, b, and c, and a point with coordinates x0, y0, z0, we just substitute x0, y0, z0, and a, b, and c into this equation. Then we distribute and simplify, and we get this equation of the plane in general form. Sometimes people will put the, the constant d on the other side. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. That's where we want to go. But we were neither given a point in the plane or a normal vector to the plane, but the fact that these two lines are in the plane will allow us to find a point in the plane and a normal vector to the plane. Um, so we're going to use this to find this. And once we use this to find this, we'll substitute these guys into here and then we'll be pretty much done. Okay, so let's look at this information that we're given and try to get from the information that was given to, to this part of the problem right here. So we're told that our plane contains this line and this line. Now, one thing that will help us um, tremendously in using these lines is knowing um, what point is guaranteed to lie on each of these lines and what the direction vector is for each of these lines. And we didn't talk about the symmetric equations of a plane very much, at, or of a, of a line very much at all, excuse me. But if I take my equations for a line, These are my parametric equations. If I take each of them and solve for t, well then that t value is the same on this line or on this equation, in this equation, and in this equation. So we can set three quantities all equal to each other. Solving this for t, I'll have x minus x naught divided by a equals t. Solving this one for t, we get y minus y naught divided by b. That's equal to t. And this last one, we have z minus z naught divided by c. And we set all of those equal to each other. So these are the symmetric equations of a line. And over here, remember how this worked, x naught, y naught, z naught was a point on the line. So here's our line. That's a point on it. Now, if I'm given symmetric equations of the line, x naught, y naught, and z naught are the numbers being subtracted from x, y, and z in the numerator. So we're going to need that here. Um, I can identify x naught, y naught, and z naught from this equation by comparing this equation to this equation. Now, remember when you're looking at parametric equations, the direction vector of a line is hidden right there in the parametric equations. The coefficients of t are the components of the direction vector. So coefficients of t are a, b, and c. So the direction vector has components a, b, and c. Well, when we took these and we solved for t, um, we had to divide by the a, b, and c to get t by itself. So the a, b, and c end up in the denominator. So this, when we have parametric equations for the line, it's really easy to identify both the point on the line and the direction vector. Symmetric equations are similar. The point on the line comes from looking at what's subtracted from x, y, and z in the numerator, and the direction vector from the line, for that line um, comes from those denominators, the, the numbers in the denominator. Those are the components of v. Okay, so we've got a plane, and we know it contains this line and this line. Since we know it contains this line, we know it contains all the points on that line, and it also, that plane also contains the direction vector of the line. As and the same is true for this one. So let's start drawing pictures and figure out uh, how we can take this and get the point and the normal vector that we need. Okay, so I've got a plane. And I'm told that this line, I'm going to call it line one, lies in the plane. So here's line one. Well, there's nothing in the denominator or nothing shown, so we know that that's an implied one. 
Um, given that, I can identify the direction vector of the line. It's negative 4, 1, 1. And then I can look at the numerators to identify that point, x0, y0, z0 on the line. I'm subtracting 1 from the x, so x0 is 1. I'm not subtracting anything from the y, so y0 is 0. And I'm subtracting a negative 1 from the z, so I've got a negative 1 there. And the way I tend to think of it is whatever sign I see, I'm going to use the opposite sign in the point. So if I see a negative one, I'm going to have a positive one. Zero is opposite of zero is zero. And the opposite of positive one is negative one. Okay, so I've got a plane and it contains this line. Well, if it contains this line and this line contains that point, well then that point P is in my plane. So my point P, one, zero, negative one is right there. And that's good because we needed a point on the plane. We've got it. Uh, one, zero, negative one is on the plane. Um, and we also know that the direction vector v is in the plane. So the direction vector that has components negative 4, 1, and 1, that lies in the plane as well. Okay. So I've got a point in the plane. I just need the normal vector. Hopefully line 2 will help us to get the normal vector. And we also know that line 2 lies in our plane. And line two had these symmetric equations. We've got x plus one over negative four, y minus one, and then z minus three. Those are all equal to each other. I'll put a one here and a one there. Again, if I want the direction vector, I just look at the denominators. The denominators are negative four, one, and one. So those are the components of my direction vector. And notice the direction vector of line two is equal to the direction vector of line one. So that means those two lines are parallel to each other, which is a little bit unfortunate because I was hoping they'd have different direction vectors and then we could just take their cross product to get the normal that we were looking for. Um, that didn't happen. I didn't do a very good job drawing parallel lines. But I, and what I ended up with is two parallel lines. Um, that are in the plane. Now, I can also find a point Q on this line. I'm using P in line one, so I'll use Q for line two. I just look at what I'm subtracting from X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. Just take the opposite sign of what's there. So we're gonna have negative one, positive one, and three. I'll call that Q. and uh, that's on our plane. Okay, so in order to use this equation, we need a point. We could use either P or Q, that would be fine, and we also need a normal vector to the plane. Now remember, um, at normal vector is perpendicular to all of the vectors in the plane. So one of the ways that we can find the normal vector is we can find two vectors in the plane and take their cross product. So let's say U is in the plane, and the vector v is in the plane, the cross product u cross v, um, well, u cross v would be pointing up and v cross u would be pointing down and they both be perpendicular or normal um, to the plane. Um, so usually if we um, are trying to find a normal vector, we usually try to find two vectors in the plane, take the cross product and, and that would give us a normal vector. Problem is we only have one vector in the plane, right? I have to think to ourselves, how can I get a another vector in the plane. It's actually not too bad. We can find another vector. We've got a point P and a point Q in the plane. So let's make a vector between those two points. Um, the point or the vector PQ is also in the plane. Once I've got PQ and V, I can take their cross product. That'll give me a normal vector. And we can use the normal vector and this point X naught, Y naught, Z naught, and I'll use P so why not? We could use P or Q, that'd be fine. And we'll substitute in here and then we'll simplify. Okay, so let's find the vector PQ. Remember how we do that? We take the coordinates of the terminal point Q and we subtract the coordinates of the initial point. So we have negative one minus one, it's negative two, one minus zero is one, three minus negative one is three plus one, which is four. Okay, 
and a normal vector is PQ crossed with V because notice that V and PQ are not multiples of each other. Um, they're not parallel to each other. So we've got two non-parallel vectors in the plane. We take their cross product, we'll get the normal to the plane. So PQ will go here, um, V goes here. Cross out the row and col column containing I hat. And then we multiply. So we get one minus, and then we multiply cross that diagonal and subtract. And then cross out the row and column containing J hat. Multiply, give negative two, oops. Multiply again and then subtract, we're subtracting negative 16, so we're adding 16. But remember with j hat, you have to multiply that result by negative one. And then for the z component, cross out the row and column containing k hat, you have negative two minus a negative four. So you're adding four. So we end up with the vector three, and that is a 14 times negative one is, or that's negative three, and then we have negative 14, and then a positive two there. And I like my A in this form to be a positive number. It's just a personal preference. So I'm going to multiply this by negative one. It'll still be normal to the plane. I'm just flipping it and making it go in the opposite direction. So I have three, uh, 14, and negative two as the components of my normal vector A, B, C. So now I just substitute into the equation of the plane. This is the equation of A plane. So A, B, and C are 3, uh, 14, and negative 2. And I'm subtracting x naught, y naught, z naught and I'll use one, zero, negative one. And then if we distribute, I'm subtracting a negative one, so that should be adding one. I'll have three X minus three plus 14 Y minus two Z minus two. And I can write that this way. Negative three minus two is negative five. So that's one version of general form, or some authors like to put the constant on the other side. That's the other version of general form. Okay, so that's it. Let me briefly recap. We're given the equation of a plane containing these two lines. In order to find the equation of a plane, we need a point and a normal vector. Since this line lies in the plane, any point that's that lies on that line is in the plane. So we use the symmetric equations of the line to identify the direction vector and the point. If this point lies on the line, it lies in the plane. We do the same thing for the second line. We've got a point, another point that's in the plane and a, another direction vector. They happen to be the same, so we can't just take their cross product. We need another vector in the plane, one that's not parallel to negative one, one, uh, one. Uh, so we create a vector from P to Q. And now we've got two um, non-parallel vectors in the plane. Take their cross product to get a normal vector. Do whatever you want to it to change the length um, or direction. I just wanted that A to be positive. It's just a personal preference. And then once you have your normal vector and your point P, just substitute into the equation of the plane and simplify. <laughs>